has played just five games last year for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And now Pierce over the middle, fires it in, and the catch is made by Jeffers Harris. And look at the rugby scrum on Terrence Jeffers Harris as he pulls his way down close to the 30-yard line. He'll still be a couple of yards short of a Winnipeg first down. So Justin Pilardi in the field goal unit will come on to try to give Winnipeg the lead. That's a big boy there. I was talking to Terrence Jeffers Harris before the ball game. Talked to him about how much weight he put on in the offseason. His high school football coach owns a gym down the Atlanta area. And he, he lived in there, put on about a good 15 solid pounds. He feels like a lot of that comes off. He says he's already lost about 10 of it. But uh, shows you his strength there and what he's able to do once he catches the football. Pilardi from the 38. With a slight breeze. Pilardi puts it up and good. Blue Bombers are back on top, 16-13. Early in the second half. As long as I can remember football here, the cannon used to be right in the, at the end of the end zone. Daniel Pickton's been operating for five years. He throws the fireworks in there, uses concussion powder for the Big Bang and a smoke pot in the nozzle for flashing smoke. Now, I remember back in the 70s, a Winnipeg receiver was about to catch a touchdown pass. They shot the cannon off too soon, and the guys panicked. And didn't catch the ball. Yeah, I think it happened to Kenny Plain back in the day too, when he scored right in the end zone, right in front of the cannon, and scared the bejeebies out of him. <laughs> there it is, the artillery protecting us here in Winnipeg. Yeah. They had to put it up on the roof, probably for liability issues. Loading up, expecting more fireworks here from the Bombers' offense. You would think you'd be wearing some type of headgear of protection, because that is gunpowder, isn't it? I tried to stick my hand in there. Yeah, just jamming away, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that. Lardy sends it deep to Brown at the seven-yard line. Drives it down, and Brown breaks through the coverage up to the 40-yard line. But this return is likely coming back and will seal the Lions deep in their own zone. Tim Brown does have a touchdown. To his credit this year, scored against the Calgary Stan Peters in week number two. BC number 23, the 10-yard penalty, first down. Until tonight, that had been Brown's only carry of the year. And the penalty, meantime, is on fullback Jamal Lee. So the Lions, instead of starting out across the 40-yard line, will be at their own 14. But the Lions dress five running backs, Robertson, Harris, Brown, Lombala, and Lee. A lot of them play a big factor in special teams, and Lee got caught for the hold in there. Well, Robertson again finds a seam up the left side. Ian Logan steps into him, and not before Robertson gets across the 23-yard line and close to another first down. Another direct snap to Jamal Robertson, and, you know, this is a good run to pick up you know, approximately 10 yards here, but this is not the Jamal Robertson that we've seen over the last four or five years. He's he's much more explosive than that. I can tell you that he's been hampered by that Achilles, and I can see it in his ability to burst right there, and he's not happy, I can guarantee you that. Six carries for 24 yards for Robertson, who appears to have been retaped at halftime. Second and short. Jackson wow. takes his time and goes off tackle for about four yards. You don't see that very often, and you really are take, you're taking a chance here when you go lateral because any type of penetration is going to stymie you as a quarterback, and Jarius must have seen something on, on video, and he has the opportunity, and he's going to just go down the line here as the surge continues for the right side and finds a soft spot and turns it up and picks up a critical first down deep in B.C.'s own territory. Play fake to Robertson, and around. John Gore is going nowhere. Almost in their playbook, like we, we knew pre-snap by formation in video study, and this is where that pays off for defensive personnel and football players in general. When you can watch this happen and watch the reaction of Doug Brown, Odell Willis, he sees it, forces Gore underneath. Brown is swamped by Smith. 
Well, when the 6'8 guy puts his arms out. Oh, yeah, it's done. I mean, you got, you got 700 pounds right there, and Dorian Smith and Doug Brown all over you. You're not going anywhere. Good jump by Willis, but a flag is down. Lord on the run. Oh. If the stiff arm is Suber, it goes of out me. of bounds at the 42-yard line. We'll see what the flag was about. That was Heismanish right there. That was crazy. And it appeared as though Odell Willis had crossed the line he had. And so the game will stand. It'll be a first down on the pickup of 18 yards by Travis Lula. Outside. Winnipeg, number 40. That penalty's declined. First down. And that 18 yeah. yard gain equals his longest carry of the year. Yeah, he's projected to have like 227 yards on the year running, but I'm, I think that's going to double because this guy can actually he can run the football. That's a great stiff arm on a nice defensive back. I believe that was Hefney. He's stiff arm there. And well, that's Travis Lule showing you that he's a big, strong, young, powerful quarterback. About 6'2, 220 pounds. First down for the 42. Lule under pressure. And down he goes. Clint Kent and Kenny Maynard got him that time. Well, it's a good thing he did because he had he had Sean Gore all alone, top of the field, had beaten Brandon Stewart. Lule's looking right. He never comes off of it, hangs on to it long. If he would have looked left and eliminated sooner with his initial read, he might have had a chance. You see him right here. Watch what he does. He's got a beat right now. Give it to him. But Lule's looking the other way. He's got to get off the field side, the short side read quicker and deliver that ball to wide open Sean Gore. Give him a chance. Lost his five, second and 15. Here they come again. Lule fires. And this time the catch is made by Dobson Collins, short of a first down. And oh, now a flag at the end of the play, way after the tackle was made. That's and I think they're going to call, is it a late hit? No, no, that's Dobson Collins. He threw the football back Ooh. at Jonathan Hefney and uh, just, you know, lost his, lost his composure there. And this will not go over after well the play. after a couple of drops. Objectionable conduct, taunting. BC number eight. It's a 10 yard penalty after the play. It's still third down. It meant 80. Right here, and he just chunks the ball back at Hefney. No need for that. You know, and young receiver frustrated. He's put three on the ground. He makes a nice catch. Keep your composure. Play the game of football. Cost and his team 10 yards there. Harry Floyd stands at the 20. The punt bounces inbounds and then out. Not a bad kick by McCallum. And the Bombers will start at their own 34 yard line when we come back. Hitting and turnover free football game so far. Winnipeg with a three point lead on BC. How about that shot? The huddle. Yeah. Cameraman right in the huddle. That was sweet. That was good looking. You want to get back in there, huh? Up close and personal. Looked like he was going to call a play for Pierce. We'll toss to Reed on the right side. Reed being run down by Jerome Dennis. Gets away, but steps out of bounds after a loss of about three. And Jerome Dennis, who was cut by Hamilton a couple weeks ago and not too happy about it, forces the play outside. Happy to be a BC Lion, and Dennis does exactly what he's supposed to do is position himself outside with outside leverage until the rest of the posse gets there and forces Reed out of bounds. Nice job by Jerome Dennis making his first start field side corner for the BC Lions in place of Williams. And by field side corner you mean to the wide, wide side. side. That's right. Wide side is field side short side is to the boundary. Second and long. Pierce lots of time over the top. Harris and almost intercepted by Ryan Phillips. Just a tip drill. Ryan Phillips, who's got great hands, and usually he has an opportunity. He comes down with it. Buck Pierce looks left, eliminates, goes right over the top to Terrence Jeffers Harris. Ryan had a beat on it the whole way. I think Harris getting a hand on it. Watch. Really distracted him right there. Tight coverage. Renault on to punt. 
Low kick. Sends Harris back to the 25-yard line. Andrew Harris gets a block in the corner. Off he goes. He's got the kicker to beat. And Renault slowed him up long enough for Brandon Stewart to make the tackle, but not before an impressive return by Harris. A 53-yard punt. And he takes it back 25. Excellent field position for the BC Lions on this drive. Andrew Harris, second year, BC Lions from Vancouver Island Junior football team. Getting some help on the edge. Look at that. You're a Chuck making it happen. Iraqi trying to get there, making it happen. Oh, gets gets Clint Kent late. Springs Harris for a few more. Nice job on teams for the BC Lions. First down from the Winnipeg 48-yard line. Jamal Robertson is wrapped up and buried. Dorian Smith got in there. Smith's having a night. Couple of sacks, three tackles for losses, and Dorian Smith, one of those players who called the late Richard Harris like a father to him. Had that effect on anybody I think he touched. You know, we even heard it yesterday in the press conference with Coach La Paul, uh, po Coach Paul La Police, and he said that, you know, at 41, and him being 63, he was like a father figure to me. And he had that effect will continue for a long time because he's taught a lot of players around the league some valuable lessons about life and football. Second and 11. Lule fires it out there and the catch is made by Akeem Foster. But Foster will be well short of a BC first down. Akeem Foster, second year man out of St. Francis Xavier University in Anaganish, Nova Scotia. Part of that very young receiving core for the BC Lions. How do you say that again? St. Francis Xavier. No, 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 that last part. <laughs> Anna Ganesh. There you go. Anna Ganesh. Very nice. A very scenic place in Nova Scotia. Yes. You gotta get out there if you had, man. East. You gotta try to say it. Country. Before you go there, you should say it, man. Here's McCallum aiming for the corner. And he's got it, but did it go in the end zone? And it did. BC gets one and now trails by a bear. Kicking? Yeah. Who would, who would be the best field goal kicker of the four? He tossed up between Kleine and me. Randorf. Randorf, he can hold. He's got sweet hands. He can hold for us. Schultz, I don't think his ankle's going to let him do it. Here's Pierce under pressure, and he is sacked. And once again, the BC Lion defense comes up big as Karan Williams has his first of the night, the fourth for the BC Lions. Yeah, Kar Karan Williams is, you know, just having a great year. I, I really believe he is an underrated year. You haven't heard a lot for, about him because their defense has given up over 30 points in four ball games, and just goes right around Douglas. And he's been having an exceptional football season in spite of giving up so many points defensively. Now there's second and long for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and Pierce was looking deep, but he got tripped up. And finished off by Anton McKenzie. And Pierce gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. And Winnipeg will once again have to punt. And that's just pressure up front. You've got linebackers being and in. That's blitzing and engaging. That means they suck up to the running backs. And then when they check release, they follow them out of the backfield. But that was pressure in the middle, get to getting to Buck Pierce, really disrupting his rhythm. And when he's trying to set his feet and go through his progressions, he's really not able to do that right now. Deep punt for the Bombers, 16th of the game. And this is Harris, again, from the 40-yard line. And this time off the football. Fumbled it. Brandon Stewart's fighting for it, and it's Winnipeg football on the first turnover of the game. Yeah, it looks like Darius Bowman may be the guy that caused this fumble. Not quite sure, but... He, you know, he's playing middle linebacker the first time for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First time in his life playing in the middle, filling in for Joe Lobodon. But he's got to run down on teams. And right here, they are going to see him get his hand on the football, knocks it out of Harris's hands. And then it's Brandon Stewart, the field side corner, strong side, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who comes up with the fumble. First turnover of the ball game. And a huge one gives the Bombers the ball back at the B.C. 43-yard line. Victory. 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 
Jeffers Harris puts his hip down, tiptoes up the sideline. He goes out of bounds at the 26 for a gain of 18 and a Winnipeg first down. I'm, I'm really impressed with what I see from the Bombers receiving core. Each guy kind of flexing their muscles, showing you what they bring to the table. And certainly this guy, Terrence Jeffers Harris, has got speed, side, and strength. And watch him walk the tightrope up the sidelines right here, getting the extra yards. Nice play design by the Bombers outflanking the BC Lions. First down now from the 25. And we've got an issue. Time out. A time Winnipeg. out now called by the Blue Bombers with 2.22 to go in the third quarter. You look at Winnipeg last week against Toronto, really put up some nice numbers across the board. You know, Terrence Edwards, he had nine catches on the season going into today, tonight's ball game. And three of those catches for, for touchdowns. So 33% of the time when he's catching the football, he's putting in the end zone and in big chunks, averaging 25 yards per catch. And the rest of the crew, young receiving core, stepping up for Buck Pierce in a big way last week against the Toronto Argonauts. Bombers trying to take advantage of their league-leading 17th takeaway of the season. Nine of those have been in the fourth quarter, Buck, which is, uh, uh, which is impressive for that defense. Pierce to the sideline. Corey Lutz makes the catch. He lost the football. It rolls out of bounds, close to a first down. Oh, it's out of bounds at about the 16, but Corey Watson got smoked oh, and he's still he down. Got broken half, and you know who it was? It was Solomon Elamimian. When he brings it, he just levels people. We've seen it since he's been in the league. Just a few, you know, just a year and four or five.